Tricolor Turf War is the most fun I've had with Turf War and Splatfest for years now, and at the same time, it's also a completely broken mess that doesn't really actually show off what's supposed to be special about the mode. Yeah, this is gonna be a weird video. Uh, subscribe, I guess. Intro done. Let's go. Now, when this mode got revealed, the main thing that got people hype is the idea of three teams. I mean, look at my direct reaction. What? Four Yo! Four four? Three teams? <laughs> yes! What? No. Having multiple teams clash outside of looking amazing with the colors of the game was a con Concept never done before, but what if I told you the fact that there's three teams doesn't actually really matter in Tricolor? Remember, two of these teams are actually on the same team, they can just grief each other if you don't know about it. If you replace those two teams with one team, the entire mode plays basically the exact same. The map would need some tweaking percentage-wise, obviously, since it's currently split between two teams, but it's pretty doable. It's also worth noting that the two attacking teams being different team colors means that often people attack each other even when they shouldn't because it's not clear that they need to win together against the defending team, so that's also a problem. The only real reason the two teams being separate matters other than visual-wise is because of the two different teams they stand for in Splatfest, and it's probably a big part of why it's a Splatfest exclusive mode, a problem I'll talk about later. What actually makes Tricolor feel so special and distinct is actually the Ultra Signals. These fix one of the main problems with normal turf war, that only the last 30 seconds of the game are so impactful, to the point where you can actually just win by winning in the last 30 seconds, even if you've been losing the last two and a half minutes. And before someone says you can do it in ranked, if you're winning for long enough, you'll simply knock out in ranked, and on top of that, you have to win multiple team fights to come back in overtime against a team that's been holding for the majority of the match. So no, this is not the same comparison as a mode where you only have to win one fight in the last 30 seconds. Just being able to grab an ultra signal, even if you don't actually get it, reduces the amount of time until you have to get the next one. And if you actually obtain the signal, you now get permanent turf in your color that'll affect the final fight, requiring the enemies to get more ground than they would normally. This gives a unique hybrid of objective being the entire map like a normal turf war, but also a normal objective like in the ranked modes, and it makes the first two minutes of the game infinitely more interesting, which is just awesome, and that's the main reason I've had fun with it. However, I also wanted to know how to beat this mode, specifically as defenders, because in the first few months of the game, it was so talked about that the defenders were absolutely screwed, and I wanted to be on the defending team. So when I finally got my chance on the second Splatfest after the game's launch, I figured it out. Now, unfortunately, the answer is now going to compound a problem that Turf War already has, which is uh, to win in defending Tricolor, you kind of want to spawn camp. I've seen most teams try to defend the Ultra Signal by sitting in the middle, but this has two problems. First of all, there's no ground between you and the Signal, so if you die, the Signal immediately flips. It's like taking a Splat Zones fight by sitting on top of the zone. If you get moved off of it, the enemies also get to affect the objective at the same time. The other issue is you're giving the opponents the most amount of places to push in on you. This is especially compounded by Sturgeon being the first one, where the enemies not only had approach options, but also high ground. You were literally fighting in the worst spot imaginable. In theory, the further ahead you push, the better. It starts to reduce the amount of routes the opponents can come from, and it puts more ground between you. By the time you get to Sturgeon Shipyard spawn area, even if you lose a fight there, you'll be able to respawn and take a second fight before they can get to the signal, giving you two chances to defend it instead of only one. Now, to be fair, the optimal play for attackers could also be argued as pretty fun since you basically just bum rush the signals. Remember, every time you grab it, it's less time to capture it. So even failing to take the ultra signal is better than not getting there at all. So for the first two minutes, you're basically just running at signals the whole game. This kind of gets at another problem though. This is more complex of a mode than some actual ranked modes, and a lot of the deeper mechanics of it, such as the ultra signal timer going down, aren't even directly stated to the player. I'm betting there's people watching who had no idea that was even a thing, but this is being played out as a casual mode for Splatfest. So does this mode even belong in Splatfest? I've seen so many people talk about new casual modes or new modes in general, this is the main one we get for the base game, and it's only available during Splatfest, which seem to happen every two months, and it doesn't even become available for the entire Splatfest. I think it would have made a lot of sense as an extra casual version of Turf War that you could also queue into, and this would also solve having a ton of ranked modes, but not a lot of casual modes, which is an inherent problem by now. There's even more problems about Tricolor I could talk about, like the amount of clout you would get from getting the Ultra Signal affecting the Splatfest result 
results, but there's just so many weird things about it to where I'm not really sure what the point of this mode is supposed to be. And even if we did figure that out, it's clear whatever it's supposed to be, it's not really living up to its full potential, and I'm not really sure how to get it there. Is it something that should be in Splatfest, or shouldn't be? Should it be making the three teams more of a factor, or not? On top of that, I've seen a lot of people argue that Tricolor is a straight-up downgrade from Shifty Stations, and while I can agree with them moving on from Shifty Stations, considering that they've already done most of the single-player gimmicks and there wouldn't be as many to make, having unique stages in that rotation was really cool. And this is coming from someone who personally prefers Tricolor, because I think most of the Shifty Stations just weren't that fun to play on. And finally, as well, I think a lot of people would have been more happy with what would have also been the easier mode to make, which is a 3 versus 3 versus 3. By Pedal Squid had a good video on it, and I've seen a ton of people talking about this on Twitter. A 3v3v3 is way more interesting, way more unique, way simpler to do with less random, complicated depth stuff behind it, and is closer to normal turf war to actually fit better for a whole Splatfest type thing. Personally, I like normal tricolor, and I think it's cool. I wish it was available outside of Splatfest, but I can understand that it is the way it is. I guess my two main hopes is we eventually get a 3v3v3 mode, and that tricolor will be available outside of Splatfest once those are over. At the moment, though, even if Tricolor is kind of weird in the spot it's in, I like the idea that they're going for and the mode is fun to play. And now that you can play as the defending or attacking team in Splatfest, I think players will be able to experiment and have a lot more fun with it playing the side they enjoy most. So at the end of the day, I think it's a cool experiment and I can't wait to see what they do with it in the future. Let me know what you guys think about Tricolor below and I'll see you all next time.